filmography. Yes. Yeah. No more slander. Everyone's don't okay, slander I'm people. Done, I'm done slandering the president of Guam. Bermuda. Yeah. That is Guam is <laughs> president. Yeah. The president Both of Bermuda. tropical places. That's interesting. Does it have a president or a prime minister? What does Bermuda have? I don't even know. I don't know. Guam's an American territory. They'd have a, like a governor. Here's some like slander. Guam, yeah. I bet. I bet Bermuda is just one Guam. Of What's holding, a British holding protectorate? companies. Is, is, I bet Bermuda. it's just a bunch of evil holding companies. Which one is the... yeah? Which one is still the Brit British one? Is that the Bahamas or Bermuda? I forget. Like, what about Come on, Pretty Mama? I'm the president of the Bahamas. Is still UK as the British Virgin Islands versus US Virgin Islands. Who runs Kokomo? Nobody is. I don't think it's Blaster a... Master runs Kokomo. Oh, okay. It's somewhere <laughs> stupid. Kokomo. It's like in Minnesota or something. It's not like a play. It's just I guess what? it sounded good. Yeah. Where Are you kidding is... me? No, Kokomo where is just in is Kokomo? Let's find out. Where is Kokomo? Kokomo, Indiana. It's in Indiana. What? What the hell is going on? <laughs> that's my club. <laughs> that feels like that's like worse than learning that Santa Claus isn't real, which I never believed in anyway. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I've ruined the worst Beach Boy song for you. <laughs> wow. Can't be the worst. You've made it more worse. No, the worst something. Beach Boys song is a smart, smart Girls. Anyone hear Smart Girls? No. Smart Holy... Girls. Oh never no, no, losing. it's much, much worse than that. Hold, no, it's much. <laughs> I'm gonna. You guys are gonna listen to a bit of Smart Girls for a is moment. Is it with rap in it? Because you. Made it is. To that. It's oh, it's where Doctor Landy made him rap. <clears throat> it's very memorable and forgettable at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. But it's definitely the worst. Ah, I'm getting screamed at by anime. Ah, what? <laughs> because it was playing an ad and it was really loud. Brian, I hope your tire is okay. How's your tire? <laughs> oh god, it tells oh, you. Oh, it was shredded. That's exciting. I have to ask. Yeah, my people yeah. To check my so at the top tire. of the hill, coming home, <laughs> I get this alert and I watch the PS PSI on the tire deck like, dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh... I'm like, please get me to flat ground before it goes completely flat, which more or less happened, but it was just shredded. So then I got to wait for 90 minutes for AAA to show up, and by then the sun was rising. Um, I change then... all four tires on my car twice a year. Really? What? I have to change all oh, four tires on my tires, tires on them and then legally? and then switch them back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so like snow tires? Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got it down to where it takes about 30, 40 minutes to do all four. So it's not hard if you if you're not trying to do anything else besides just swap them out. Yeah, if you're know? not on the side of the road. I remember once changing a tire like on the top of a bridge in Spaghetti Junction. That was pretty mm -hmm. annoying. <laughs> I like missed my cousin's wedding because I couldn't get my tire off after it went flat, and mm. it was very embarrassing. And then mm. a, a highway, whatever highway, a AAA man came and he with his steel toe boot kicked it off. And I was just like, uh, mm. like a the advantages shot. of steel toed boots. Yeah, it felt like a complete bungler. You bungler. I had these steel tip shoes that were for you know keeping my feet safe but of course the day i dropped a server on my foot was not the day i was wearing those shoes mm -hmm. oh god <laughs> i've got my shit kicking shoes <laughs> I'm, I'm neurotic enough that i stopped wearing steel toe boots because i was afraid of the, the whatever thing dropping on the the steel and that cutting my toes off which doesn't make any sense but i was still like in the back of my head i was constantly thinking about that mm. so anyway mm. anyway that would probably re require like a car or something. I basically wear massively. sandals that look like shoes. Whenever, like they're like Adidas, they're shoes, but the top is just like mesh. So if it rains, like my feet are instantly wet. You know, it's like a sponge. Wow. But yeah, so I have yeah, rain shoes meant... for rainy days. Or it's one of the ones where they're like tennis shoes, but it's like the parts that you think are white are like human skin. Is it like they're made out of human skin? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your skin, but I don't know. They could be made of your skin. Too. So, is the US or the ISS space station like exploding or something right now? What? Some... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Look at CNN. It's not that bad. It's like uh, the new Starliner capsule that docked has the leak or something like that. Oh, but wow. Shocking. Word. Boeing. Shocking. Boeing. Boeing would make something has small no way. leaks. No way. <laughs> it's not on the CNN certainly doesn't seem to care so much. Does Fox News care? 
<laughs> oh, cool. Republicans hold Attorney General Garland in contempt. That's great. That's really great. Okay. I don't see anything about Space Station. I'll have to trust you on that. Nobody cares about space anymore. Chick fil A announces $35 summer camp for kids. Okay. Remember when Merrick Garland was like the best compromise uh, Supreme Court justice candidate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now nobody likes him for a hearing. Let's see what's in the crime blotter for Japan. That's always fun. Well, some of it's not fun. Ones. I'll skip the ones that are not real fun. Illegal taxis creating quandary for Japan's police cab monopolies. Yikes. 86-year-old woman arrested after threatening police officer with knife at her home. Mm -hmm. hmm. Oh, there's the uh, One Piece gang. You, you hear about that? No. Man arrested after yanking high school girl's hair while on train in Niigata Prefecture. 66-year-old man arrested for stabbing acquaintance in Tokyo. Tokyo. You're right. People do just stab each other in Japan, right? They it's all stabbing. It's, yeah, it's all stabby stuff. Yeah. Lots of stabbies. Um, <laughs> so we as long as you're wearing some sort of like Kevlar or something, you're probably Yeah, if you wear Kevlar safe. everywhere, you're extremely safe. Yeah. We had a guy, all they, they caught a guy with a bunch of guns who was planning to shoot up like a rap, like a rap show because there are too many black people here, according to him. Mm. Again, like I, in Japan, I walk around by myself at midnight with a Gibson guitar on my back. Mm. <laughs> that's, how, that's how much oh. we don't worry in Japan. <laughs> yeah, the recent, this wasn't here, but it was another, I think somewhere in the Midwest where a, a couple of kids were returning paintball guns to a sporting goods store and one guy, sh and a guy shot one of them in the mm. back. With a paint gun? No. No, with a real gun. Yeah. Oh, okay. It would be funnier if it was with a paint gun. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that would have been in the news. <laughs> it would have been Japan. <laughs> uh -huh. I just told you it's all like man yeah. yanks high school girl's hair, and that's like like the headlines. <laughs> no. So mm. I wish that was. Oh, Mar Marvel Studios Blade lost another director. No way. <laughs> so the worst. The worst. This isn't really the worst news, but it is the news that that shook me the most is that Sony bought Alamo Draft House. The I've never show. seen an Alamo Draft House, so that's the yeah. kind of after my time in America thing. I think it's one not, of those in SF. It's it's not bad. It's it's a nice place. It's not that. It's that a movie studio wasn't even allowed to own a theater chain until 2020 for like 75 years and also ah. also that is sort of synonymous with like the only good theater chain okay see <sighs> i i see all God. of my movies at toho cinemas so <laughs> I mean, we don't have one here either but like we were going to at some point like it got canceled because i think because of the pandemic or maybe just yeah. before no, but, just it's it's, it's um, always I've been going to Toho cinemas for years. So, yeah. you know, it's like it didn't occur to me that the filmmaking yeah. company would not own the theater as well. It's different here because <laughs> we live it's in called the vertical land marketing, yeah. aka monopolies, <laughs> aka capitalism. So, you know, something's going on with this all the time. Uh, yeah, something to do with an air leak on the space station. It's like, oh, yeah, you want to have air on there. That's doesn't, useful look good am i wrong or is john supposed to be here today or is that next week that's next week for that's sorry i'll but let me let me that's for catacombs of the moon which i'm still like why didn't why does he like catacombs on the moon but sure <laughs> it is an episode that is not well liked but i liked it so. uh monday monday so i guess maybe he mm. likes it or hates it either it's fine uh your <laughs> you guys monday is is that so it has a, a fanatic guy going crazy much like the the what was it the the the, <laughs> the testament of man. arcadia yeah. i was almost at the mark of arcana but that's different yeah. the testament of arcadia so maybe that's his thing is he just likes to talk about fanatics being fanatical and so brian you you have to do the summary for john next time that's your oh job. i do yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's a busy man. He ain't got time for summaries. He's got to write <laughs> summaries of Voyager episodes. Right, right. Well, it's just now now you have to do the summary. I remember that was that was when I first did a podcast. Oh crap! Now I have to write the summary. Uh oh. <laughs>
Well, there's no way we can make that. You, there's no way you'll be able to make the summary as long as a Voyager summary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't go for Voyager length. Um. <laughs> you yeah, well, we can't. There's not enough here. Prologue. Oh, Voyager <laughs> is flying into a new region of the Delta Quadrant. <laughs> Act one. <laughs> That was a quick cold open. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember what it was, but there was something we were doing where, where I wanted to revisit a uh, Deep Space Nine episode that reminded me that it reminded me of. And I went back and listened to their Deep Space Nine podcast. And the summary for that episode was like, holy shit, those episodes had a lot of politics. <laughs> like, holy shit. I well. just. I, I have a real janky summary for you today because I just wrote it and did not. It's a first draft. I'm reading my first draft uh, for you. There isn't that much story here. Mm. So, oh, story that's here. not what Wiki was... says. <laughs> <laughs> Wiki's is like 10 pair, like full paragraphs long or something. <laughs> there was some interesting like um, background actor stuff. I, I, part of it was I, somebody, I suddenly realized this one woman that's been around since season one and I didn't even know it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, I haven't. Have I seen you before? Oh yeah, I have. And then this, the kind of the guest metamorph transformation was some other actress who was mm -hmm. weird. I'm sure you have it all in your trivia. I've got know. those. I don't have the uh, recurring. There are a couple of recurring background actors that I haven't really covered because there was never a good entry point. And now I feel bad. So mm. uh, they You're don't so really have anything to do. There. They got. It's, they need some warm bodies in there. So or it's, cold I bodies. Just, well, with all the other the cast show. changes, I was amazed that there are some extras that still were around from season one. It didn't really dawn on me that one gal uh, her up. Shall we does this? Do right. the thing. Welcome to Podcast 1999, the podcast about Space 1999. I'm your seed of destruction, Mark. Uh, I, was, I was just going to call myself a seed of destruction, <laughs> not even say Matt, which is my the name I go by. And I am the heart of Calthon, mm. otherwise known as Brian. <laughs> I missed it too. Yeah, you said what I. Yeah, okay. I'm mirror mark. That's you can tell because I'm raising my left hand, but it's and you have a goatee, right? What? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> the part is on the wrong side of his head. <laughs> dun, dun, Spoiler. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, that that was the. Tri I'm sure it was probably in your trivia, but it was like he let them shoot Landa. I was like, go ahead, shoot my bad side for the evil. For the evil Koenig or the um the driven <laughs> maybe we'll call him the bad driven side. the driven yes. Koenig. I don't know. Sorry, I'm I'm already stepping on your trivial feet though. So <laughs> you want to just jump into that? We can call him Mirror Koenig. Uh, he is you know literally a reverse mirror image. Mm. Doppelganger Koenig. I didn't know what to call him. Evil. Koenig. I called him Evil Koenig in my notes. <laughs> I think yeah. My my summary will include the words doppelganger and fake. <laughs> fake Koenig. Right. <laughs> fake Koenig. Uh, this is 13th in production order for season two. This week we have the final use of the cave set that's been used in nine other episodes this season. Uh, this was the second time Martin Landau played doppelgangers, the first in the 1973 Columbo episode, Double Shock. Uh, Landau believed his left profile was superior to his right and was notorious for insisting any scene he appeared in be set up to capture him only from the left. In this instance, Lando allowed himself to be filmed in right profile, provided he was playing his evil replica at the time. Kevin Connor is back to direct his second and final episode for the show, the other one being Brian the Brain. John Goldsmith has the primary writing credit, and this is his only script for the show. Born in 1947 in London, he worked mostly as a TV writer, and this is only the second show he wrote for. He wanted to have a sporadic career lasting up until 2015. You could see his other work in projects such as Singapore Sling, Danny, the Champion of the World, and The Old Curiosity Shop. This is the part where I would tell you about the actor who was the voice of Calthon, but I could not find anything about him at all, so he will remain uncredited here. I'm sorry if you know who he is and you're screaming at the podcast. I cannot hear you. Uh, the one unnamed guard who was trying to stop Tony and Maya was Jack Claff. He was born 1951 in Johannesburg, South Africa. This was his first acting credit. His second acting credit was in Star Wars as ill-fated pilot Red 4. And he didn't stop there. You'd also see him in The Other Arf, For Your Eyes Only, and Whoops, Apocalypse. And he's still acting today with upcoming projects on his IMDb page. Finally, as Maya credited as female operative, but named Cranston in the episode, we have Martha Nairn. She has a very short, very British resume, 
all in the late 1970s, featuring Softly Softly Task Force, BBC Play of the Month, and The Professionals. This will be her only appearance on Space 1999. Uh, also, Jet Class' only appearance. Anyway, that's the that's trivia. It. That's it? That's it? Okay. The meager offering I have for you. How meager? Uh, I, I guess we should bounce it over to Brian. You just said you had a little more background actor stuff, or did we, oh, just, did we just get yeah. to it? Do you have the voice? Do you have his name? No, I don't have the voice. It was um sorry, I wasn't actually prepared for that, but uh there was um one of the background actors I think was uh like in some deleted scenes in Star Wars, like like um like Wedge's friend or something? No, it was like a woman who was hanging out with Han in the cantina, but we never saw any of that. Ah. So they, but, they probably uh, maybe, took her out. I may be crossing, issue. yeah. I may be crossing my streams here. <laughs> I think it was in this uh, episode. Well, I'll just but toss th- in. Oh, uh, was she was McClunky? Just... Ooh, not McClunky. Yeah, because that's McClunky. what is that? Who McClunky is? Yeah, because we're just shouting her, "Hey, McClunky, get over here! We're having a tussle," you know. And then he gets shot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna become McClunky truthers on this podcast. Man, McClunky's McClunky hot. Is. <laughs> um, I just wanted to throw in that the novelization of this one, which uh, Brian, this is usually your corner, but it seems that it's in the novel called The Space Jackers. Which yes, I thought is... that was pretty funny. <laughs> that is true. I haven't had much of a chance to keep up with the novels. I was trying to skim them on PDF before I get in here, but I didn't. Space Jackin. Okay. Oh, I saw something about that. a season one ization of this but i couldn't tell what it was for like it was a radio play or something yeah so it was a 2015 Maybe. thing where they basically okay. just changed the credits and changed the score you know okay. reverted the credits to the first series and you know made it very gray instead of the wadsworth stuff so okay i kind of said the same thing twice there now i'll say the summary yeah. of this <clears throat> there we go i'm ready Moonbase alpha is passing a jewel-like asteroid with disruptive energy properties Commander Koenig and Alan Carter fly down, and Koenig is replaced by an alien reflection of himself. The doppelganger returns to the station, and foe Koenig orders all of Alpha's power be directed at the asteroid, which he claims will free Alpha of the asteroid's influence. Meyer understands that this is a fake Koenig with nefarious plans and gets herself confined to quarters. Back on the planet, the real Koenig interfaces with the aliens. It is an AI created by the Calthons. They froze their entire civilization in a crystal seed to survive a black sun. And the AI on the asteroid will try to reconstitute their civilization by any means necessary. Back on Alpha, Helena and Tony also begin to suspect fake Koenig, while Alan Carter stays a company man. Tony and Meyer sneak off to the asteroid to find out what's up. They save the real Koenig, but get trapped themselves. Real Koenig confronts his doppelganger back on the moon base, and the crew supports him. Fake Koenig starts screaming in a Judge Doom voice, and the reflection shatters. Also saving Tony and Meyer. Okay. Finished. So, we so, have the whole cast so here again so for this. How nice. It's, Do it, we it, need the whole cast for this? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need Landau for this, unlike, I guess, I get, last yeah. week. <laughs> I guess if you're going to have two Landals, then you do need the whole cast so that one Landau can hang out with some of them and the other Landau can hang out with another others. Yeah, and and they can both scream, so that's nice. You get yeah. double screaming. Oh, yeah. This is like a this double is, dose of screaming. This is a, this has to be peak Koenig screaming, right? If you for season it. two, definitely, yeah. Um, How many you saw the, like, the, the big, we'll go straight to the end, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the big reveal, you know, the, the, the tip off. What makes him different from the real Coney? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you got a Calic if you... Let's face it, the only person who hadn't figured it out at that point was Alan Carter. So... <laughs> well, who they, remains they, stubbornly they... loyal to him at the wrong times every time. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. I, I got so tired of hearing them argue where he just kept insisting that Koenig was acting like that because he was hiding something that he didn't want anyone to know, which doesn't make any sense. And and then he just started just screaming, "It's John Koenig! It's John Koenig!" <laughs> See, I I feel like um, season one, Alan Carter was like our space jockey. That's now kind of Tony's role. So now Alan Carter is like the dumb jock that works in your office. You know, 
Yeah, kind of. He called he called <laughs> Tony a cobber. He, he busted out the cobber line again. <laughs> yeah, I I heard the cobber line. I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, another back. beer reference in the script. Continuity at work. Yeah. <laughs> what he says, it's like I just drank some of my own beer. Like even Tony hates his beer now. Yes, Tony hates his own beer. <laughs> yeah. It's official. We've, we've determined that. <laughs> Maybe, maybe just eventually towards the end of the series, maybe he'll just be alone in a room drinking it sadly. See, in, <laughs> in, in modern TV, him. in modern TV, the the beer would be a major element of the final episode, you know, because all the little all the little seeds of destruction that they planted in the earlier part of the episode will through fruition, fruition to come. Hmm, that didn't come out well. <laughs> It'll be like <laughs> it would be something like the beer is actually good, but it turns out that the beer is an alien life form that is. <laughs> it turns out that the beer is actually good, but the Alphans have bad taste. <laughs> dun, like, dun, yeah, they dun. they all have COVID nineteen, so they can't taste the beer. Right, space COVID nineteen, COVID two thousand one. Yeah. That's what it's called. COVID nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, it's in the number already. Okay, <laughs> there, there's some there's some non wit from Matt. Okay. <laughs> Well, I set you up for it, didn't I? Hmm. <laughs> I think I think it works all together. Um, um, let's see, Sandra's back. That's fun. We like seeing Sandra back. She is now referred to as San. San, San excuse me, San. Well, it's... yeah, there's something behind that too. I think that was a name they were going to give another character, but they decided I... we'll just give it. We'll leave it in the script um, the way it is and give it back to to uh, Xenia. But they they just kept to start calling her San. She's it's I didn't know fifteen hundred days into since they've left Moon Orbit, they've given her a nickname. They shortened it. They don't like saying Sandra. They can't decide if Sandra or Sandra, so now it's just San. You get it. I didn't yeah. put We're this calling in the Helena trivia. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Helena. Um <laughs> really, really good acting from uh, Barbara Vanier. I was gonna say that I I left it out of the trivia because I didn't think it was interesting, but this this role was written for Yasko. That yeah, that's I mean, does it really matter? Unfortunately, <laughs> does it matter? it's not like there's any characterization. There. It, it is unfortunately sort of a. There are know. three things this character needs to do. Uh, they do not involve the character, you know. <laughs> but but yeah, the theory is basically that Freiberger was just punishing her by calling her character Son instead of Sandra, mm. or maybe that was his hip young change to the. Yo script. yo, you're Son now. It's cool, you know. I, I don't young know. people shorten everybody's names. I, I think I've already said it though. Yeah, I, I do really think like Barbara Bain is putting way more into season two than season one. Maybe she's the only person doing that, but she she seems to be putting a lot more juice into her role in this season. Just from an acting yeah, the, standpoint, you know? The eyes when when Koenig says when evil Koenig says, I'm gonna confine you to medical, like the look she gives him is just like We've all seen that, right? <laughs> like, oh, Landau like, seen oh, it a lot of times. Oh, you messed up. Yeah, I bet he had. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was that was fantastic. Um, um, for some reason, when they start going around, and this this is the last time they use the cave set. That's weird, since we're only like halfway in the season. But whatever. Um, <laughs> well, uh, maybe they use a be- a worse cave. Anyway, I got I I got serious vibes of uh, Tom Sawyer's Island when I was like five years old. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It felt, that's what it felt like to me. That's what my memory of Tom Sawyer Island is. I mean, I've been in it more recently, um, recently being 20 years ago, but uh, it, it's not that exciting. But in my memory, it is that exciting, you know? I mean, it kind of reminded me of, of when he was uh, trapped in, what, God, what was it, Missing Link? He was trapped by the spider, by, by that man, and then oh, the spider's yeah, yeah, rod. Yeah. That guy was kind of, I mean, I guess he was technically more altruistic. This, the, well, I guess the AI in this is yeah. not doing a bad thing. It's just, it's, it has no, it's amoral, right? So. Hilariously says, hey, by the way, <laughs> the seed is programmed for resurrection. It can't make moral choices or decisions. <laughs> it's like, that's just like, I'm not like swinging your arms and saying, I'm not hitting you. I'm not, hit, I'm not hitting you. You well, know, if, you are, just... if you were programming an AI to resuscitate yourself in the undetermined future, would you in, would you include morality in it? Would you? I don't even think, think I would explain. That? I don't think I would put anything in that would explain. Hey, by the way, it doesn't have morality, so you can't be mad. <laughs> so we're taunting you now, okay? <laughs> You're starting to sound like Brian uh, the Brain a little bit. 
You I guess so. <laughs> I guess it's happening. I guess you're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> but that, let's let's put in. Uh, I mean, we're talking like resurrecting a civilization of billions of people, and there's like 280 people on moon base. I mean, well, the needs of it? the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. So that's right. So moon they base should, should have it let it happen. Give it up for the Calgonians. Uh, did I say that right? Calgonians. <laughs> Cal Calphon. Calphons. Mm. So, um, actually, there is a line where <laughs> where Evil Koenig says, "Some people may die, but some people are n- not, not all, all the, the people, people, Doctor." And I was like, "What if Spock said that at the end of Wrath of God?" <laughs> 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 some people may die. But yeah, that line is uh, still undercooked a little bit. Let's work on that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. <laughs> well, he's a weird alien AI. He's where he's doing as best he can. He hasn't interacted with humans before. <laughs> um, There's also, I mean, Koenig also had like a a couple of uh, being an evil evil Koenig had a couple of very fun acting. Like oh, yeah, parts here. Fantastic. trying to find where. <laughs> um, oh well, right, right when um when he's basically about to murder them with a the laser gun, and then Helena says the power will be diverted from the energy beam that you like so much. He just does this thing where with his eyes, where he's sort of like <laughs> he looks like a like a cat or something. <laughs> I don't know, or like yeah. Gollum. I don't know. When, when he first he's takes not... charge, it makes me think a little bit about uh, Captain Jellico from the Chain of Command. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation mm-hmm. episode. Um, of course, the thing with uh, as as many people know, Jellica's not doing a bad job. He's just a prick, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of that in Star Trek, right? Like there, but there are plenty I, I, of but well, no, there's lots of bad recently, morals and stuff. Yeah. No, they make bad well, bad morals, but there are yeah. also there's also sometimes people who like use the chain of command in ways that our regulars may not like it, and then it might not necessarily be as bad as. Yeah, but they're Western usually trying to do so. something horrible, right? So I'm just saying, like, well, Jellico's... Yeah. I think the thing with Jellico is when you think about it, actually, he's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> or, like, Laura Dern from Star Trek, Star Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I guess that's kind of one. Except uh, Princess Leia is always in cahoots with her, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that was what I thought was the weakest thing about that film, was I didn't... I felt like it that, that whatever they were trying to say was really muddled. And I, yeah, just let Poe in on the loop a little earlier. I mean, he is. I, I, I get we're supposed to think that Poe's right, but he's not. But we, it didn't yeah. make me feel stupid. It made me feel like, why did you make me watch all that? It didn't do anything. Mm. I am on team like that movie, by the way. I, me I too. That, that's the. I just now. think the, I'm just I'm only bringing that up because that's the part of the movie I had the most problem with where most mm. people hate a lot of the things that i liked like the muppet casino i love i don't care <laughs> i don't care what people feel about that i love the muppet casino i think it's well, cool. there are a lot of things yeah that were individually interesting about that movie but the thing that bugged me about it was that there was a uh, some kind of a master plan for the trilogy because if you're going to tell a story that's at three parts you better make sure they you know you have a beginning middle and end and it's like you know <laughs> luke chucking the saber over his shoulder is symbolically you know brian johnson chucking J.J. Abrams' plan over his shoulder. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, not... I'm just going to do my own thing and just wing it and then see where <laughs> it goes. And that, that left a bit of a mess. But anyway, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe going into the weeds. <laughs> maybe Abrams didn't have a plan because I feel like if he did, then maybe he would have told Ryan Johnson, hey, here's the plan. Mm. And then Ryan Johnson wouldn't have done that. I still blame J.J. Abrams because one way or the other yeah the blames on him yeah. because it's like well on the producers too it's like okay what's the story of this trilogy what, what's the beginning middle and end because but it's got yeah. a track something <laughs> right it's got you got to foreshadow the first episode what's going to happen in the last it, yeah, i don't know it's, yeah. it's, it's, no i mean i also <laughs> i also strongly believe that george lucas did not watch the original trilogy at all before he wrote the prequels <laughs> well, like, why I should he they're prequels they some... come before um <laughs> well at least I, that story all came out of one mind maybe a little scattered but at least it had a little more coherence to it anyway than, doppelganger than Koenig doesn't i, I would say yeah doppelganger plan. koenig yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to share his plan with anybody okay. it did get me thinking of the what, milgram experiment is that what you yeah. brought up a few weeks ago that came to mind again well, brian the brains experiment yeah <laughs> but even here like how or maybe this is more of the Stanford prison one actually because uh security definitely steps up you know that one guy is ready to laser maya and tony uh, <laughs> this isn't really an experiment as much as it's just 
a guy pretending to be another guy taking a whole lot of control because this guy has way too much like cash with these people to the point where they're morons. (laughs) Like to the point where if you, if it's so obvious that this guy is not the guy or is, or is something is very wrong. And they're like, look, it's John Koenig. Okay. Well, Maya (laughs) figures figures out immediately. So I guess she's not as dumb as the rest of them. Um, You know, Tony's just like, gee, honey, I guess so. Um, (laughs) And (sighs) Helena, it takes her a little longer than you think. But, I mean, she's on, she figures it out relatively soon. So, And then all of that, the regular crew people are just, they're used to just doing what this guy says. So, yeah. Yeah, she says something like she believed everything he said right up until she touched his hand, which (laughs) is pretty, still pretty oblivious. But, but yeah, I yeah. Guess the plot, she touched the plot his hand pretty requires, soon, though. Yeah, so the when plot real requires Koenig, him not to know. Yeah, but when Real Koenig shows up, he says something like, there are things that you and I have experienced <laughs> that he can't know. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, first of all, he's a doppelganger with all your memories. So, yes, he will know. Oh, Does he have yeah, all I the memories? And secondly, and secondly, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and secondly, it's just... What what did you expect them to be doing while you were gone? Were you like <laughs> whining and dining Helena in the off hours or something? So I don't know. This is it was kind of weird. Just oh, I don't think he's referring to whining and dining. Of... Yeah, that's well, I was <laughs> using that as a euphemism, but thank you. Um, no, you don't. You don't need to worry about it. season two, Space Nineteen Ninety Nine. It's a sexy show. You can, you can say what you want. Show. It's a sexy sci-fi. <laughs> I I just like this would be. <laughs> This, if this was better written, then it it's just it's it's just so an unbelievably ham fisted. Like you just feel you feel like he could have come up with mm-hmm. a plan that was not just guard everything, scream at everyone, tell everyone to shoot anyone who leaves. It's that's like, great. Oh, that, but that's absurd. what you want to see Martin Landau do. You know? <laughs> yeah, and he was having fun with it. And they're giving you what you I want. Liked it. it might be dumb. But they're giving this. you what you want. Yeah. I want wall to wall screaming and freaky psychedelic lights. Also, occasionally I... bursts of technical scientific brilliance when he comes down and announces his plan to stop the 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 asteroid from destroying them. And it's like, who ever heard Coney talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't yeah. know about you know energy beams and stuff. He'd defer to Victor or Maya or somebody about that, which is why Maya you know kind of caught on to him right away. Probably. This is a weird one to kind of retrofit into a season one episode, like like we kind of mentioned they did in 2015. I'm just like, what what would you do that with? Um, which one? Like Journey Away, my might... Chrysalis, or yeah, for sure. I was going to mention that Mark of Arcanon. Like I would do it with one of those. You know, it seems like a better mm-hmm. fit. But I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter, really? matter that much. But I think this still fits into the recent streak of season one esque episodes. It's it's not like as smart as some of the other ones, but you know it's. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, I don't fun. think this one's this one's. I mean, this one's a little silly. I mean, anything with you know two of one character with the evil one is a little silly. I mean, Mirror Mirror is a little silly, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd go so far as to say every Mirror Universe thing. I've come on. I've gone on record as saying I don't like Mirror Universe. Oh, they get way silly. Well, it's funny in the Mirror there. Universes, they never actually see their mirror counterparts, right? Because they always switch with them. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the Kirk was in that one, and the Evil Kirk was in this one, and so on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like um um um. Well, the classic one was it Enemy Within, right? You know, transporter mm-hmm. duplicate. Okay, yeah, he's he's yep. evil. Yeah, we're, um, we're gonna right apply the season one. two episodes directly to Trek episodes. That's the match here, obviously, not more and, than mirror mirror. Yeah. yeah. If you ever read, you ever read Spock Must Die? It's like the very first. Supposedly you know, Star I think Trek I did, novel. to be honest, but I've uh, forgotten it. Another that transporter is... duplicate. Only this time, Spock's duplicated, and like in this episode, it's like he's a, he's the little mirror image, but it's like no one caught on to this quickly enough after he stepped off the transporter platform. So like mm. this evil doppelganger, he quickly swapped his uh, the part in his hair and his uniform to the right, to the right direction so no one could tell him apart. Because I he hope had we get 50-foot Koenig next week. 
That would be fun. Some 50 foot uh, kind of thing. Oh, uh, but of course, Maya could do that kind of thing. We have 50 foot Maya, no problem. Uh, she turns into what? The predator in this? The hag predator? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> we'll see that creature again. That was That's the one guy who's always the stunt person who always plays the, the monster. Right. She Honestly, with. that's better. That's better than her turning into a tiger, isn't it? She's just going to turn into some bizarro <laughs> alien with no... I mean, you can just get as weird with the rubber as you want. Oh, that sounds bad. You can get weird mm. as the rubber as you want because you're just going to have this unexplainable character for five seconds. And and also, you don't need animal wranglers on this set. That helps a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you want to put... Less liability is, of getting mauled by a tiger or something. <laughs> this is, Maybe this is credit to, to old Fred. This is a perfect way to put dumb rubber monsters into your episodes regularly without completely taking a crap on your episode like luton where we yeah. just get the dumb aliens the whole time right here it's like mm -hmm. five seconds yeah. dumb alien love it you know <laughs> yeah and it also came sort of out of nowhere to the point oh where yeah that just, helps too I, I had to pause it and rewind i was like what what <laughs> like just have it in really fast uh there was there was a line earlier that annoyed me where tony was said said to maya calm down or you'll turn into some creature <laughs> like 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 uh as if she just w was going to turn into some random creature every time what she is, is this like psych on P pms or something she's just going to randomly metamorphize into something and she gets mad yeah, <laughs> yeah tony's generally she's not the rude. hulk she's not bruce banner <laughs> <laughs> but then but then later he he calls he calls Alan a dumb can a dumb blind kangaroo, which is much funnier. Dumb blind kangaroo. Uh, you you got way more quotes than I did in this. Oh, did I get a quote in this one? I didn't. Oh, oh, my, oh I know my favorite quote. Okay. Uh, I yours. just wrote you're as cold as ice because of the song. So. Dun, 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 <laughs> yeah. Dun. The uh, no, my favorite is right at the end. Koenig returns and he says, "You're at my desk, alien." <laughs> that's great yeah <laughs> my, my favorite Pretty was low when... key it's like i'm not gonna yeah. mess with you i know who you are <laughs> yeah that was that was um strikingly modern i don't know uh, my favorite line was when he screamed to activate laser gun maybe he could have shown the... his he could have shown his um, laser gun his calvin klein underwear to, to show he was a real koenig because they're like oh the patches are backwards he really, yeah, check out my underwear unless unless the alien was that thorough of course I just wonder what uh, the value, like on the uh, you know collectibles market, is for that reverse jacket with all the backward <laughs> patches. Oh yeah, I was thinking that would be a fun cosplay. To, I'm sure someone's done that at something, um, even though it's real specific <laughs> and a, weird. I mean, that's what you do. You've been, you've been to five conventions. Now it's time to get specific and weird. Isn't that how it works? I yeah, haven't I'm been to conventions. I don't know. These are my conventions. <laughs> I am so lazy that I will never make a. I never put a costume on for any <laughs> reason ever. I'm always just. I think about cosplay and then I just don't do anything. In fact, one well, year I was just going to wear a black Zentai suit and just tell people that I'm just a shadow, but I didn't even bother with that. Mm. <laughs> one of those suits that's got the uh, the wire in it that you can program, that the glowing wire, and you can just change its appearance. That would be cool. I do not have one of those. <laughs> well, let's send you one. I wore yeah, my generic like, yeah. flight suit twice for this show, I guess, but yeah. Yes, you did. It's too hot now. I'm not going to do it now. So it's, oh, it's, yeah. almost, it's summery now. <laughs> it's great in winter. <laughs> so, Mark, you I, I say did... this, is, this is the last time we're going to see this cave? You said it's the yep. last time? Mm -hmm. You said nine times? We've actually been in this cave nine, nine times. Nine times. Does it have mildew in it or so, something? Ten times. And they keep repainting it every week. So this week it was... <laughs> blue right it's like this every week, week they have to go out there blue glitter. make it orange this week right out there make it yeah. orange and then they make it orange and then... <laughs> oh missed yeah. the catacomb set I, I feel like there must have been some flaw it just seems weird that they'd use it for half the season and not again you know so <laughs> i think even they got tired of constant you know rocks well again trek never did with planet hell you saw planet hell literally like a hundred plus times if you take all the <laughs> lower decks episode and <laughs> make fun of the fact that oh no caves not caves everything <laughs> happens in caves <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's kind of like this episode kind of like this Damn season it's like everything happens in a cave yeah yeah, yeah. The, the the episodes the cave was in the metamorph the exiles journey to where one moment of humanity all the glisters new adam new eve the mark of arcanon the ab chrysalis and catacombs of the moon so there you go. I'm um, only Aiden, then I haven't watched true. Catacombs yet. 
<laughs> you, don't, you don't have to tell stop and think that. about it just for a moment. You realize, oh my! Nobody God. referenced catacombs. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> now I want to go pick out. Well, maybe they're we're trying to be nice to you and not I reference it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled it. I know the caves and catacombs <laughs> of the moon now. <laughs> oh, no. Um. Let's... Well, guess what? Guess what? Guess what's in those caves? No. Can, can you guess? No. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Catacombs. Mm. Anyway. Uh let's see. So yeah, I didn't really have so many um notes, sudden quotes, quotes. I have notes and of quotes. Oh notes yeah, my quotes. wife complains that that I'm icy most of the, I mean like I'm cold all the time. She didn't like that. <laughs> I I heard something like it's like men get colder as they get older and women get warmer. Oh, interesting. Okay, that sounds possible. <laughs> yeah. What'd you guys think of, of Tony just like walking straight into Maya's quarters without knocking? Uh, <laughs> it's like okay, you're, you're, you are the you are the security chief. I think it's the first time we've seen him without his jacket on, so you can actually see he has that red Paul Morrow sleeve on his uh, tunic. It seems like I never seen. Hey, him he might his be jacket. on. He might be in on a walk-in basis. Maybe he spends most of his time there. Maybe he killed Paul Morrow and took his jacket. Mm. <laughs> but you know on, on uh, what's really uh, on point with Maya is that of course there's a microscope in her room because <laughs> she's a scientist. Science. I'm just studying things. I study a few things off, off the clock. <laughs> kind of the first example of weird, insane dialogue in this episode is the the whole thing where Evil Koenig dismisses her and she says she's not arguing, she's thinking scientifically, and I'm just kind of like, eh. you're screaming a lot yeah. for scientific. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets heated. There are a lot of heated argument when heated arguments that don't make sense in this episode, and I did not take down the exact dialogue because that would just require me to type a lot. But so uh, <laughs> if the beam is gonna kill some of the people on moon base, if not all, um, mm -hmm. does that mean green is the death color again? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Oh now <laughs> green's the death color. Okay. Big giant green thing. back to green we've we've circled around a few colors we're back to green <laughs> <laughs> is there a shirt that says green is the death color no well, i guess if we ever start doing merch that'll be one of the first ones <laughs> all right <laughs> so when you guys are like talking to someone from another culture do you just automatically rip out the you know um uh mutiny on the bounty references you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes i i do and then i'm extremely condescending to them when they don't know what i'm yeah. talking about well you're a psychon you don't know what that's it's like yeah thanks tony yeah but i i, I just think you... i would watch my my usage of idioms and things around maya because she's probably not going to understand most of them or maybe they've had a screening of mutiny last week, you know, in the in the moon base record. It's true. I wish they had like a film night or something on moon base alpha, and then we could explain a lot of uh, her cultural uh, assimilation of human. Uh, of, uh, <laughs> maybe movie. they watch Psycon movies you know, there. You know, what what was ever, the uh, ever seen a Psycon movie? Oh uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of people turning into different things. Yeah. So <laughs> she looked up. She looked up Psycho in the database and was regretful after <laughs> that. They only need like two actors for a movie. <laughs> what was the uh, what was the movie that Seth MacFarlane made the alien lady watch in the Orville? Mm. Or is it a TV show? I, I don't know. No, I think name. it was a nobody. I, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not. Do I look yeah, like I Mike remember. Richards? No, I don't know who that was. I apologize, <laughs> Mike. Mike, if you're listening, please tweet at us and tell was us. It what show that was it Singing in the Rain? I don't know. I, I don't know. That was different. Yeah. That was. I just remember the Billy Joel music. Maybe that's what it was. It's just Billy Joel. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was hearing weird sounds coming out of my place. Motors. <laughs> I don't know if you hear the motors. It's I guess it's motors? leaving now. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what Zoom picks up and what it doesn't pick up, but in my world, like it sounded like the world. You're like <laughs> weird sounds coming out of my blank left us hanging. It's like what your wife, your daughter? What? what, what no, no, no! It was coming from some kind of car. It was some kind of a car. Okay, so, so I, we, we've learned you don't always hear these things on Zoom. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> I, I do hear people apologizing for sounds on your podcast much more than I hear sounds. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a lesson for all of us. My yes. only sound is a fan, and I don't know if you can hear it or not. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, big points you want to throw on this? Anything? Anything still stewing about? I want to know if those 
VHS tapes sticking out of the wall in the tech section are. They're like numbered one through 10 and sometimes mm. they're lit and sometimes they're not. It's like, what is that all about? Mm. <laughs> well, again, it's just like isolinear chips or something. You just have to, yeah, you have to. Right. It's uh, Billy Joel albums. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> 10. It's 10 copies of Mutiny on the Bounty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here's something. Here's different something versions. So different versions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one Mel have... Gibson, Charles Lawton one. You got the uh, the Marlon Brando <laughs> one. Yeah. So here's a here's a here's a callback. They mentioned Black Sun. Yep. Alpha was destroyed yes, by a true. black sun. So we've Which... gone full circle from black sun to black hole to black dwarf back to black sun. Here. They just don't black know what to call it. Again, so they're, they're again a black the wall, but... theoretically a black dwarf is different than a black sun. However, right. I don't think that a black sun, meaning a black hole, would have done this. Just appeared and taken all their energy and left. That's that is not you black hole type it, behavior. That's not black hole type behavior. Black holes don't do that. So I do not know. If, now I I'm now it casts entirely like into doubt my idea that they might know what a black sun or a black hole is. They don't in 1976. Stephen Hawking barely knew what one was in 1976. <laughs> I think these writer, yeah, I think these writers know less than Stephen Hawking. So you, so you guys remember Catacombs of the Moon, right? That no. episode, yes. No. That we remember just watched. Are, there wasn't a black sun week, in that, that, that we that we've already recorded. Yes. No, no, but they had a uh, <laughs> they had a, the firestorm, and it was this spinny thing, and it looked a lot like this, <laughs> the oh, heart yeah. of Calvon. It was just this thing <laughs> spinning around. <laughs> if you have we're a cool in effect, a good, you used again. Yeah, we're in kind of a a good period for uh, effects, and I don't know what I'm not finding anything in my trivia, but whatever is going on, we're on a good effect streak. Lately, I I think, my personal opinion. Um, yeah, but when the, the the effect is just like an extra an extra tank on the eagle or arm that little it's, grabby arm that does maybe, things, and it's like it's not you know someone <laughs> shining a green flashlight in Helena's face. You know, it's better than that. It's always been it's been green better is than death that for no. quite a while. Yeah. No UV is death. No wait, sorry, red is death. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Fred's maybe Fred is good at kicking people in the butt a bit to make you know nice trippy effects because uh season three of Star Trek definitely ups the trippy effect ratio. Um, yeah, spinning, is this glowing the first things. First time since like the first season we actually saw a window that faced out onto the surface. Koenig was standing like watching them build the the, the energy reflector. Outside. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I hadn't seen it, a shot like that since the first season. I was like, oh, that's nice. At least they still have that window. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, this that... season makes it kind of seem they've uh, you know buried themselves a bit like moles or something in the in the movie. Yeah, I get the feeling in season season two they're all more underground, and so you don't see windows very often. We've done a lot of traveling away from Alpha for whatever reason this season, so there has there hasn't that... been a lot of it. Yeah, there was one one or two episodes that didn't even really have Alpha, right? Yeah, which was not the case in season one. Right, you get part. plenty of alpha in this episode, though. Yeah, <laughs> the real one. I like fake Koenig, real alpha, as opposed to that last time when we got fake Moonbase for a while. I like bottle episodes. I I like to the, the yeah the feeling can... of being trapped in bottled. whatever <laughs> bottles. Yeah, <laughs> it, it forces you to be a little more creative in other ways, right? If you can't just you know dazzle them with a new set or whatever. This dad oh, yeah. with the set the the reuse set behind you, right? The Hall of Mirrors. <laughs> well, look at yeah, Force of Life, where the entire thing was on Alpha, and then the Last Suns set, which was okay. It was around Alpha. It was wasn't inside Alpha, but it was still you know what? Well, that that one was a uh, sort of a I don't know if you call it a bottle episode. No guests, so they're you mm -hmm. know sometimes you should strip down your um. Elvis, down your thing. that's where I just it's saw operation. another Hall of Mirrors. Okay, I was like, I just felt like I've been in a cinematic Hall of Mirrors like <laughs> recently, and I watched Elvis a week or two ago. <laughs> I was looking at my notes and I saw the foreigner. You're as cold as ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's only that's like I said. That's the only quote I wrote down. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, he, he was willing Helena to was... sacrifice. Yeah, their love. So Helena's like taken uh, from the uh, Doctor McCoy playbook. You know the. Um, declared medically incompetent stuff that we you used to always see in Star Trek whenever Kirk or somebody was acting crazy. Yeah, McCoy the had the last 
the last laugh, right? Yeah, there's no structure, no oversight on Moonbase, though. And the buck stops with Koenig, so, and no one's above and, that. And yeah, also, there's that. <laughs> people aren't as dumb about Koenig being crazy. Or people are more dumb about Koenig being crazy than they were about Kirk being crazy. Like, yeah. you know, there's, mm -hmm. I, I can't think of any instance on Star Trek where they gave the, the captain like this much credit where it's like, well, I know it's kind of weird, but it's Koenig, so he can do whatever he wants. He can shoot everyone with lasers and keep fast. <laughs> well, we know we've already seen in the series that when Koenig is not commanding the moon base, everyone goes crazy and starts attacking <laughs> each other within 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> like they can't function together without Koenig. <laughs> I wonder yeah, it's if kind of like Orlando a has in his contract. It's, we're sort of a cult thing when you think about it. It's like our cult leader yeah. is gone, so we're all going to eat each other now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Manson girls kept hanging out for a few years after that. He's like the most popular boy in high school. Mm. <laughs> and what else did I write? Oh, that's mutiny, Cobba. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was the exact quote, but I liked it. <laughs> yep, again, oh. Alan is way dumber in this season. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thanks. Every time there's an energy crisis on Moonbase Alpha, there's always at least two people in like ICU or in the medical center who are going to die <laughs> if you take one more bolt of power away from us. 278 now. Yeah. <laughs> but why do we never see them the rest of the time when Helen is just sitting there bored doing they, status yeah. reports? <laughs> space mold? Is that, what's, is that maybe what's getting people? You get space mold. I mean, that's a real thing, right? Yes, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the line is... I mean, some sort of like they all have fungal infections or something because yeah. things that live. It's those things in the catacombs that are oozing up into the face. Yeah, the line is in my book, Cobber, your kind of help is mutiny, which That's is also guy. actually a pretty good line aside from the word Cobber. No, that that makes the line. Come on, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> say it without it's fine. It say it without Cobber. It. Say it without Cobber. In my book, jerk, your kind of help is mutiny. <laughs> Not cover is much better. Okay, it needs cover. Let's let's not. I mean, I thought about another word to put in there, but uh, we're trying not to curse in this podcast. <laughs> I just meant to skip it completely. You know, in my book, that's mutiny. I don't know. Oh, so in my book, the book of the Bible, your the kind book of, of help Henry is mutiny. How about that? <laughs> in my book, 1984 by George Orwell, your kind of help is mutiny. In my book copy of mutiny on the bounty your kind of help is mutiny <laughs> <laughs> was that a book i mean I, I assume it was uh there's been books about the bounty i've read one it wasn't mutiny on the bounty i think but yeah there's there's probably hundreds of books about that so choose one <laughs> okay um the book is you don't really have to choose one <laughs> <laughs> so does um does alpha suffer from like um in my you know, book hop bad... on pop you're <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. I had jumped. Oh, I, I had a, I had a, a non book related thought. I was thinking, is, is, do we have like a bad, bad police situation on Moonbase Alpha? Because given yes. the opportunity, the security gets really aggressive really, really quickly. They're just swinging guns around. We could do that. Their now? own Yay. boss. Tony is their boss. And they immediately <laughs> point guns at him when they have the opportunity because straight Tony to says, fascist. Uh, straight to yes, fascist. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah, between that and uh, the doppelganger's general behavior, I was just... Who, who would you rather have Certain running your security? Situations. Tony or Tuvok? Uh, <laughs> Tuvok, because when he said stuff, it would be, be funnier. Yeah. F is that maybe, a good answer? Maybe because he's a Tuvok Vulcan. Tuvok can rationalize it with logic. <laughs> when he insults people, it's very funny. Tony yeah. will just insult you and call you a dumb psychon. Yeah. No. Yeah, he just call you a dumb kangaroo, and it's not that funny. <laughs> you get the finger from, from Tuvok, yeah. Yeah, he'd give you the finger. <laughs> That's things, the, that, yeah. uh, things that Helena wouldn't know about. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Uh, Cut that out. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. I want Michael Garibaldi to be my head of security <laughs> when he's not on the not on the bottle. <laughs> um drunk yeah, okay, security I'll take, is always um, fun. Okay. I'll take Rectus and Scrotus from Furiosa as my security. <laughs> <laughs> I spoiling Actually, no, I would not. One of those I... is a very bad person. Uh, I can't remember I which one. To watch it. 
He was so bad that, it, well, his character was a bad enough person that he had to put on Twitter, hey, you know, I'm not actually like this in real life, and I was playing a character. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. I'll oh, oh, you. I got um thing about the inside the caves with the mirror stuff. There was some interesting effects where Landau was obviously there, you know, pretending to be frozen as best he could, but you could still see reflections in the mirror. And I was like, but he's supposed to be inside the mirror. They must have had him standing off camera or something where he actually looked like he was. Uh, having there. done a few um, Twilight Zones where people have to stand really still, I'd say he's not a very good standing. Still. No, he's not a very good freeze. <laughs> like that. that I and no, I was just wondering about the uh, the logistics of making it look like he was in the mirror without getting him in the shot. I thought that was I did. I thought done it was just fairly like glass well. Case, to be honest, I thought yeah, I thought so too. I just thought he was buying a piece of glass, and then we were supposed to believe it was a reflection. But then you saw actual reflections of uh, Tony and Maya when they're trying to get him out in front of it. I was like. I think oh, that's just normal, that the, normal glass the, reflections, maybe. It's just like a bunch of compositing work. Like the, mm. the stuff where you see him die at the end is clearly just he was making a crazy face and being composited into the shot <laughs> in some weird I just way. thought it was a pretty good reflection effect. That was a very crazy yeah, face. Was, it felt, it almost felt stuff. like they were like digitally morphing his face, which was definitely not the case in 1976. <laughs> no. Yeah, they they just it looked like they just sort of did a double exposure. Which yeah, yeah, or more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, why didn't Koenig like as soon as he gets released from the uh, you know the funhouse mirror immediately warn? Um... <laughs> do not get near the mirror. Do not get. Do not go leave. into the mirror. It might yeah, be well, good if we yeah. leave this room. Yeah, I liked. Uh, uh, so yeah, you two, you two go on this suicide mission. We'll pick you up later. <laughs> well there's Wait, apparently what? a scene where alan picks them up at the end that was cut out, cut out which i think is the second time that was that a scene that where was... alan picked someone up at the end was cut out because the, this is a weird, was it one moment humanity thing. right it just yeah. it ends with a freeze frame after the climax is like yeah. it's dead the end it's like uh -huh. yeah it was a very abrupt end. So <laughs> weird. because yeah what? it literally is just koning and elena staring at each other like whoa that was mm -hmm. weird Oh, Zarl is dead. That was weird. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. get out while while you're hot. You know. <laughs> I, normally, I I love an abrupt ending, but it, that, it was just so odd. Yeah, apparently, a shooting really... script also had um an explanation where they were going to take out the um the AI you know guideline things. The, and and yeah, that's why Tony and the scene back gonna, on its way. Yeah, they were supposed to save Alpha. It turned <laughs> out Koenig saved everyone by destroying the doppelganger, who turned into a pile of bath salts. That I thought was kind of interesting. Yep. <laughs> Alan's getting high tonight, or excuse me, um, no, no, um, <laughs> Paul Morrow's getting high tonight. That's where I why we don't see him. He's just off in his room. He's. In... <laughs> I was expecting though. I was expecting Calphon when the, when the when the beam gets cut off to Calphon. What's it going to like explode or something if they didn't? Do something, or is it just gonna go turn cold again? And I guess they had to go save Tony and Maya. Cold again. Where do they I, yeah. get more energy? They just put out the solar panels, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Hope I thought I might have read some by. critical mass or something that it might become unstable and just blow up, like we've seen other things. Oh, it's unstable now. It's just gonna blow up. Let's get out of here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, they didn't. didn't we leave Maya the, uh... up there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, they, <laughs> they didn't trap. Uh trap the voice of Calthon in the little pit yeah so, i guess uh, they did kind of stumble bum the ending of this a little bit when you think about it <laughs> well, especially oh, yeah. just considering it seems in the filming much... not the script it seems the script did you know yeah. actually end but the show does not yeah um, the thing is that we spent so much time with people just yelling at each other arguing over whether koenig was evil or not when we the audience know that koenig is evil so it's just that that kind of thing rubs me the wrong way like okay you you can have them argue some, but don't make it just so that they're screaming back and forth at each Maybe other. Maybe it's cause... something about this kind of a uh, story. I just uh, did the parallel over in the Twilight Zone, which has like four separate scenes of, you know, hmm, you don't seem the same. Like, you know, they just have to have multiple scenes about it. And so does this. <laughs> it's like, how many red flags yeah. do you need? <laughs> <laughs> how many have to pile up before you realize something that's really going wrong here? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean, in the Twilight Zone, they at least, do that. 
And the Twilight Zone, they at least have the excuse of, um, you know, we haven't seen this kind of thing before. But they, they got weird crap going on in Moon Base every other week. Uh, 1,500 yeah, days. Even... And uh, I guess weird things happen about every six months when you break down the days. But <laughs> this isn't even the, the, this isn't even like the third time that they've dealt with a, an evil force trying to take their energy. Because if know, you go by like... the days, right? Because on Star Trek, they it seems like they really do encounter something totally bizarre every week or other week, right? Whereas Moonbase, it, it, you go by the days, and it's like, yeah, most of Moonbase time is probably excruciatingly boring, right? And punctuated. What is it? The thing about war, you know, utter boredom um, punctuated by blasts of other terror? <laughs> well, th you think in terms of that Enterprise is faster, than the, theoretically, I don't know Unless, about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess sometimes the moon goes through a warp. How or many something. space warps do you have? Yes. Sometimes the moon goes fast. Okay. <laughs> yes, that should be the tagline. Sometimes it goes show. slow. Sometimes the moon goes fast. Space 1999, a Fred Freiberger production. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's do hardcore versus softcore um, for this episode. That's science, of course. Um, Jesus. This is a tough <laughs> question because I don't know. Uh, no, it's maybe it's not tough. I don't know. Ooh, okay, you're first then. Fr from the from the hip, let's say thirty percent hard and seventy percent soft core. Okay. No, no explanation why. You're just oh, my explanation is oh. <laughs> just that there. There's Explain no yourself. explanation. There's no explanation for. I mean, okay, the idea of a seed makes some sense but there's no explanation of how they can copy someone there's no explanation of how the doppelganger works what its inner monologue is there's no it, it's just a driven thing that does does fails at the thing it's doing okay uh, see i was wanting to go 60 60 40 60 on the hard sci-fi because uh mm -hmm. all of those questions like it's weird alien technology that we don't really get um you know time to explore um uh, if you want a good one from trek the ionians totally fascinating we just get a little glimpse of that and it doesn't make any sense but you know there's got to mm -hmm. be more there so i'm like I, I, you know i'm thinking of what is it the uh the bottled kryptonian city or something and superman or um you know weird crystal technology again superman movie there's some superman stuff going on here i guess superman does not count as hard yeah. sci-fi but <laughs> i think superman is not entirely soft it's just um that it it wasn't set up to be sci-fi but they had a hundred years of superman comics to draw from to do whatever richard donner felt like doing yeah. or mario puzo i guess whatever yeah. mario puzo felt mm -hmm. like doing Maybe it's like in the context of the season. I just want to give this more than 50% hard sci fi on my end. So 60 mm -hmm. hard, 40 soft. Brian, how about you? All right. I was kind of going to go in that direction. Um, The uh, the weird alien, you know, crystalline tech is the one thing. Um, The fact, like I said, that we saw um some technical action on the moon. They built a uh, giant energy reflector out of nothing in a matter of an hour or something so they could they do got this plenty of crazy metal. scheme plenty yeah of metal. yeah <laughs> so there they was out of the table or ship there was that um but yeah the whole you know evil duplicate trope is pretty old so i would kind of you know kind of almost call that soft sci-fi at this point because it's Brian the brain's kind of head is the, is the central reflector <laughs> in the middle of the dish they took yes. his head oh, there, off and put it in there that's it <laughs> That's how they did it. They use old Brian the Brain parts to, to put it <laughs> together that quickly. I didn't think of that. Um, also, I'll give it uh, points for uh, uh, circling back to the beginning. Uh, the uh, the gal I was talking about who was like an extra all through season two. Her name I left. I find her. She's a uh, her name is Jenny uh, Cresswell, and the. the, the shot of her in the chat Her she was actually speech. like hanging out with han solo in the bar on, in the cantina on tattooing in star wars uh i don't think you see her i think that scene got cut so i'll give them an extra you know five percent for having a star wars reference mm. uh, <laughs> but, but, but one year before star wars yes i guess they were yeah, filming star wars before. at the time yeah i guess they, they probably yeah just, probably this is at pinewood and they're just yeah as well like, say she's just guy. bumping the next door isn't she <laughs> or going to right. but on the softcore side um you mentioned the other gal what was her name martha Nairn? Narn? 
Nairn. 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 N a i r n. Nairn. If you look at her credits from just a few years before, no, wait, no, she's the one. IMDb doesn't have a lot for her. Yeah, she's the one. Okay, maybe, maybe it's. uh... I mean, not only that, but the character she is named in the episode when Koenig is trying to, uh, like hassle, you know, Maya. Uh, I guess she's dead now. She died in 2015. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Mark this might be somebody else. Uh, there isn't somebody anything else. about what she did. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, uh, well, one know, one of these one of these gals or uh, her her resume seemed to have a lot of like soft soft core stuff from the early seventies. <laughs> and I thought, mm-hmm. okay, well then we'll throw in some you know another five percent on the soft side. Oh, okay, <laughs> interesting. From because practical. why not? Yeah, just, just oh, so the... she was in Cosmos fifty five forty five for you. Yeah, it's Carl Sagan. She was in. She yes. played Carl Sagan. Hail Sagan. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Shall we? Shall we wrap this one up and fly it into the moon? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just pretend that I'm screaming something about how we should fly this into the moon. Okay. What else are you I'll... screaming about? Calthan dies. Um, I'm going to scream about that. If you want Calthan to die, you're going to go to po- Patreon.com/slash Podcastio Podcastius and give us money to to kill Calthon by shooting a laser at them or cutting their laser off. It wasn't clear to me how the laser worked. But well, also there are other podcasts laser. like <laughs> there are other podcasts like Films and Filth the Citizen Kane of Podcasts, Luplos Pokemon, Game Game Show, Game Show about games, Twilight Zone covering sorry, t- time enough podcast about Twilight Zone. Cole Disney about Disney and um that's Probably all of them, but you did you know, it. La- laser, <laughs> activate laser gun. Calphon, take tweet. me away. Tweet, tweet. That's my laser noise. <laughs> Out of Slaughterhouse Five, and that was the noise is in Slaughterhouse Five. I never <laughs> seen the movie. Oh, it would be in the book. You read the oh. noise. Oh, you read the noise. No, I don't yeah. remember what the noise sounds like tweet, when you tweet. read it. I think it sounds it like ends that. with boo doo tweet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh so Sunday, Monday split. So you're Sunday. Sunday. No, excuse me. Monday, Tuesday split. Monday, Tuesday split for catacombs. Yes, Monday, Tuesday split. That's mm-hmm. your Tuesday Wait. morning or Monday afternoon. Yes, or Monday. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's well, how Mark. I say it to Mark because I also want to say my day. Mark's though. early evening. Mine the mine's like four. Yeah. Yep. Wally was the weirdest one because what was it? Um, oh yeah, PM for me. Mid- midnight in Vienna and six, uh, seven a.m. in Japan. And Mark got a nice six p.m. He Mark got the nice spot. Well, yeah. I mean, it's usually bit be- later is usually better for me because I just never sleep. But mm. you know, <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. I didn't. I I wasn't gonna have anything to do that at that time, so it doesn't matter really. Was was Una on Mission Log or Mission Log Live? I was trying to remember. She uh, up over there on After Dark. Oh, it was only yeah, she was on dark. a big old chat that I watched part of and was weird watching a chat with that many people. Yeah, yeah. That I I don't pop into that oh, one so much. That if happens do, all the I time just, around here. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and if I do, I just go into the you know text chat and say a few things and then be on my way. There's but, probably one happening right now. Yeah. No, I, 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 I more of this. Yeah, I, th- I think the perfect size is the Sunday one, which Mark, you don't want to do because it's six a.m. But for you, but nope, we we always have a uh, four to eight, which is like a reasonable number, <laughs> as opposed to twenty plus. Is uh, I think twenty is fun. I it, it was also that I could like look at the little thumbnails and see like a couple of people I knew in there. It's like I think Brian, you were in there. I don't remember. There are five people in there right now. Okay. Huh. Yeah, they're doing their disco chat. Probably their last disco chat for... Mm. Right, yep, yep. Discovery. I cannot do that. So, uh, unless I just want to listen to people talk about something I haven't seen yet. I've, mm. <laughs> I've still only oh. seen the first two episodes of that show. I've pre-ordered the, the set, which comes out at the end of August, apparently. So. so, you liked it then? 
I, I, yeah, I actually kind of, I like kind of want to rewatch it. Like I have the Picard set too, which I lucked into, right? And I haven't rewatched Picard yet, but I really am like I kind of want to rewatch Discovery. Uh, hmm. Maybe because I've only seen all the Discovery episodes like once for the most part. So uh, season two, maybe I saw it twice, but yeah. <laughs> or no, maybe not. I don't remember. Anyway. Um, yeah, the point being, I actually do have a kind of an urge to rewatch Discovery. I think if you and watching in succession and because it does change a lot over the, 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 the you know, the seasons. So I know I already said to... this. It was annoying me how slowly the Klingons were talking. Yeah. OK, that did kind of suck, especially when we were watch. I was watching it with the family a few years ago. So we had the Japanese subtitles on. So I got nothing. Right. So when the Klingons were talking, it was just all Klingon. <laughs> no uh, english well, subtitles <laughs> it's not i didn't i didn't mind how they looked it was just like god do they have to talk so slowly i those, i get really tired makeup? Of, yes i get tired of the trope where aliens are not funny because that's the pack, that's the pack led um family of klingons that we saw in, in discovery <laughs> season one <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like but that's in a lot of sci-fi it's like uh it's not it's not just I mean, and I'm not even going to say all Star Trek is like that because there's a lot of funny aliens in Star Trek. It's just maybe uh, sometimes they lean really hard into they manage like, to make the Klingon so confusing, though, that when they get to the 32nd century, it's like you see everybody but the Klingons. Right? Well, what do we do with the Klingons? I don't know. Yeah, they kind of wrote themselves in a corner with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the Klingons on Deep Space Nine were like the most fun. It was just like every time you you it opened on a bunch of Klingons, you're just like, oh boy, this is going to be really fun. And people are going to scream at each other and maybe like drink blood and eat worms. And well, I remember that really coming fun. up when uh when Michael Dorn was going to be in Picard season three. Oh, are they going to give him the updated Klingon makeup? Of course not. That would be stupid. <laughs> it's a, it's I think... it's a weird thing, man. I, it's like Star Trek cannot. They can't just accept that it's like they have to keep changing the Klingons. It's almost like start like George Lucas with Star Wars. Like they have to keep changing that one thing. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we've all seen Discovery season one, right? Well, he's I've seen the first two, two episodes. <laughs> you haven't seen anything beyond the first two episodes? Okay, well, I can't no. really talk about my Klingon theory mm. with you ah. until you've seen at least season one or at least halfway through season one <laughs> i will at some point but i mean i kind of um i'm I kind gonna of... throw out the mark probably doesn't care card if you want to tell us what it is <laughs> you can I... disagree with me well, do you, you know of any big reveals in the season one mark have you been spoiled no May yeah I don't, maybe I don't. don't don't spoil okay, me i'm not gonna okay i'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna spoil you okay i'm assuming I've... michelle yo gets written off the show pretty quickly <laughs> not as quickly as you might think sort of yeah <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I've seen all of Strange New Worlds, so if the reveal is already in that, then... I don't think so. Yeah. I also ordered the first two seasons of that because I only have it on my hard drive. I was like, I should have it on Blu-ray, and it's going to be a while before. Because I'm like, oh, I get the Picard season series set. I get into the Discovery one. I'm sure Lower Decks will be available at the end of the year. I was like, well, it, theoretically, Strange New Worlds might have a few more seasons in it, so I should just get the first two now. When is the third season starting? It just doesn't mm, say. 2025? Think, probably. <laughs> that far um, out? I think they've already filmed it a long time ago. I thought it was going to be later this year. Yeah. Maybe. Well, that, because Lower thought. Decks will be in the fall, right? So Lower Decks is sometime yeah. upcoming. And Prodigy always... starts in July. I made it one episode into pro or two episodes you, into Prodigy. You need to make it five, and that is a that I hate. I hate it when people say you have to watch five episodes of the show before it starts to click. But uh, Prodigy, you really do need to watch five episodes, and then it'll start to click. And they're not that I mean, long episodes. They're either. not that long. That <laughs> I mean, that was kind of how it was with Orville because remember we did remember when we did that episode or that podcast where uh, of, of, on singing in the rain and we were going to talk about the Orville episode. And I think I watched it and Luke didn't, but I was like, I started watching the Orville and I tapped out at the baby sex change episode, mm -hmm. but then watching that episode, the singing in the rain episode of the Orville was like season two. And by then it was like way better. So it's like, Oh, I and they'd make that sex change a major plot point as the show goes on. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, well, that's the thing is the second, the other. Yeah. The other sex change episode was my favorite episode of the whole series. It's just the way they framed it. It took, it was, I think it was just the way the characters reacted to it was like, where 
<laughs> Kelly was screaming, I'm not going to do a sex change on a baby. I was like, this is mm-hmm. uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I, I, do you watch any of the Ted show? Oh, I need to. I need to do that. I, I keep forgetting. I, I've maybe watched, I just do I'm that three now. in. Actually, we, we get referenced in the third episode of, of their podcast on it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I've I've really very casually watched the movie itself, so I should probably watch that first. But what gets referenced in the Ted show? Film, films and films. Because we had just oh, talked to Jessica oh. uh, for Dr. Strange Love. <laughs> so she, they were talking about the yes and improv thing. Improv is yes All right. and. And mm-hmm. it was like, oh, well, that works in most situations. Maybe not in a war room. And then she's like, well, actually, you no, know, I just saw yes and in a war room and was talking about Dr. Mm-hmm. Strange Love. So, because <laughs> nice. that is yes and in a war room, basically. <laughs> you posted that yeah. yet? I... Uh, on Patreon. Oh, I must I must have already heard it then. In the actual feed, it's two weeks from now. Sometimes I forget because since they're so far ahead, I've oh, already speaking, listened speaking to which I need to fix the Occult Disney one. Apparently, I accidentally posted the Occult Disney with a bunch of dead space at the end. <laughs> What's well, it's because the occult the... the occult took over their feed yeah. at the end. No, it's it's because the Atlantis one was three hours, and then when I put in sound for or um an acid or whatever, it just kept all that time. So that episode was an hour eighteen, but it still ran like Almost three hours. Oh, Jesus there's Das Boot. Okay, Das Boot is in there. Oh, we have Das Boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. Or das that was Boot a fun episode. That was a fun episode to do. Yeah, 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 that was a solid sender of an episode. I um, like when we have a good movie that we have things to talk about because sometimes we don't. Right, right. Well, we always have mo- things to talk about. It might just not be the movie per se. Oh. Uh, you- Speaking of which, you gotta go work, don't you? Um, <laughs> I'm just talking crap here. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> I said, my whole day was thrown by the the car thing because then I had to go have it towed, then go home. Fortunately, the the tire shops down the street. Go home, take a nap, wait for them to open up, wake up, call them, or you no, know, I had to wake up, go back down there, give them the key, get the quote or whatever come back here and then i just slept as long as i possibly yeah. could until i had to go get the car again because yeah now we're 11 minutes past your usual oh crap i should be out time <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm like i'm like i don't really care you're on slack schedule to today okay, if anybody gives is... me if anybody gives me crap i'll just say i had a flat tire last night and spent most of the day having to deal with it so yeah yeah tough um you have to frame it me. like how many flat tires did you have was it less uh-huh. than one i bet it was less than one <laughs> Let's see. When, when are you on next tour of films and filth? You, uh, Shawnee's the first one for a shiny, and yeah, you, you didn't want anything sooner for that. <laughs> Me? Uh, gosh, I have to pull up the list. Oh yeah, you 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 can easily. Some people don't seem to pick up on the concept that they can do that. So <laughs> I know you, but yeah, yeah. I have a. I, I just added. Um. When I was talking to Mike, uh, we put him since we were talking about Perfect Blue. I was like, "Why don't I put you on your name with a movie he doesn't know, but I'm pretty sure we'll like." Hmm. Brian, do you know that movie? Kimi no Name wa. Your name? No, I've not seen it, but that was in theaters. It was in theaters here for a long time, and it was something where I was like, "Man, I really should watch that." You really should have watched that. No, that movie is just fucking baller. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I I know I want. I know I'm gonna love it. It's just um, got a lot of guests lined up soon. And it's basically kind of based on the area I live in, kind of Nagano Gifu area. So that's mm-hmm. kind of fun too. <laughs> it's like most, well, some of it's Tokyo. You know, it's like hyper real anime where you can like visit the locations in Tokyo that you, um, you know, that are in the movie. Uh, the movie one place just, being uh, very popular because of that now. <laughs> it became, it's right like, now, uh, right now in is theaters that, is uh, Haikyuu, the dumpster battle. We've been watching Haikyuu, which is like a. Uh, a my daughter ball. did. No, they fucking love it in anime. Japan. No, they kids yeah. in Japan fucking love that. <laughs> so it's like the movie came out, and I was like, "Shit, I'd been meaning to w- get around to watch the series, and I haven't." And I've seen conflicting. Like some people are like, "Well, you should really watch the series first. and then a friend of mine said that I could just watch the movie, but I think I'm gonna watch the series first because uh, it's it's like the the context is there's a whole very important volleyball game that is completely skipped in the TV series. And the movie is just that game, and that's it. Oh, um, how about Three Ninjas Magic Mountain? Did you who did you want for that, by the way? Uh Phil wanted that, I think. Uh-huh. Did okay. you said you had somebody, maybe? Um, I had a few perspectives uh that I mean nothing came through on that. So 
Um, so I should ask him if he wants to do that instead of fear.com. Nah, I'll save him on fear.com. Uh, I'll find someone. I was actually thinking of um, inviting uh, Heather, who we talked to for Toy Story 3, just because she hangs out at the oh, cool. parks all the time. So, yeah. And oh, yeah. We haven't talked sure. to her for a year. So, that would be, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> oh. I wondered what, uh, yeah. Has anybody got aliens or aliens? Uh, Phil's got aliens. Okay. Phil? Uh, he was, uh, he's on our um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl and uh... Philip Freeman? Yeah, Philip Freeman. Yes, okay. I was like, I I need to give. He's like a, a more of a film obsessive than almost anybody I know. So I'm like, I have to give you a good movie. Like, you, need, <laughs> you you must take a good movie. Yeah, I was trying to find some good movies uh, coming up. That would be interesting. Yeah, the only issue is just this microphone. <laughs> I want him to have a better microphone. <laughs> um, do you have come and see? Taken I don't because. I... What is there's a really see? did you see the news that there was a screening of that where the schizophrenic man was just like fighting people at it uh, john arminio requested that okay cool um, be great. Yeah. oh amadeus we're gonna is open again <laughs> shit man that's oh a good that's movie. right because uh you know when is that amadeus that's so it's wonderful. not that long it's maybe like august or september um Oh weird! I actually have Coco down for a date, August eighth, twenty twenty four. Oh, why? Well, and that sounds know. correct. I don't know. No, oh, that's a little late. That's a little late. Okay. Anyway, um, is whatever. It? What is it late? No, I, I think I was like, is it an old date or a new date? But I think it actually is an. Old, that's an uh, a pre-strike date. That I, I just think it would be a, no, dude. Because we have we haven't done. I I have a list right here of okay. movies we haven't done yet. Oh yeah. wait, actually that might you may you might be right because it'll be early mid fall. We've done Wally maybe. four, five, six, seven. And that eight, airs in August, nine, yeah. Ten ten movies before that. Yeah. That might be August. I don't know. Okay. Fucking know. Uh maybe anyway, not. Amadeus. No, not August eighth. Right, uh, You're right. It's, I'll it's I'll, I'll you can pencil me in for Amadeus if Norman's not available for it. Okay. I pencil you. Because that's a good movie yeah. that's not in twenty twenty six or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What is uh, your name? I don't even recognize half. That's of the one movies. I was. That's the one I was just the anime that is like. Yeah, all with anime. Okay. Oh, Dude, that movie's fucking great. So. It is a non Miyazaki <laughs> anime on this list, which I think it may be the only one. It might be Ooh. the only one. Yeah. Uh, but no, just... I'm looking at these movies that have like problematic actors in them, like <laughs> like Braveheart or American Beauty. <laughs> yeah, as I'll say, we have some Spacey coming up a few times. I think. Uh... <laughs> Joker. Heard... Oh, I think Shaney would like to do. Joker. I think her name's already on it. Is she? Okay. <laughs> I Joker sure. is a way, ways off. She's on for The Shining, The Room. Uh, well, The Room, I don't know, because I think Mark has Room people, but <laughs> Joker, yes. Oh, I yeah, I should ask Room. I guess it's a ways off. Not anytime. It's a ways off. But yeah, that, that's one maybe I... I because I'm that's Mark's thing, I think. <laughs> well, I, I just... um I was, at, I was well, at you do like a round table, the... would go in on that. I was at a screening of the room with a few friends of mine where we didn't know what we were going to see. So like, I, mm. it'd be cool to bring one of them on because it was genuinely weird, but that may not, that may not happen. I don't anyway, know. of the one she put her name on, that's hmm. the only one where uh, we, I, I might, we might do something else uh, just because Mark has lots of room fan friends. I was friends, trying to see fans. what I threw her name on. She's shining, shining and, uh, psycho. Man. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful you know, life. Oh. You know how my friends are. They may maybe none of them will show up. So. You put yourself on for Turks in space. Yeah, I right. just thought that was weird. I had to check into that. You want right, to be the Godfather? Speaking of speaking of Turks in space, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll see you guys later. Okay, later. I'll go ahead and just end <laughs> the meeting. Oh, we're still recording, so everyone knows you have to use the bathroom now. <laughs>